In this video, I'd like to talk about the math question of the day for March 11th, 2023. And in this problem, we have a function f of x, and we need to find f of a plus h minus f of a, where a and h are just some numbers. And to answer a question like this, you probably will need pre-calculus, though you might see this in Algebra 2. It just depends how you are presented with the material. So at this point, go ahead and pause the video, see if you can work through this on your own, and when you're ready, we can go through this together. Now, assuming that you have attempted the problem, let's start working through this. And if you do have suggestions for future questions of the day, feel free to leave those as a comment. Now, this question might seem a little bit strange, why would we want to find this quantity? Why would we want to find this difference? And this comes from an idea known as the difference quotient. But before we fully get into that, let's draw a coordinate plane very quickly. And let's say we have some random function that maybe looks something like that. And we can call this function g of x. If we use the properties of algebra, we can look at what is known as the average rate of change of this function. Essentially, we're looking at how this function is changing as x increases. But with algebra, we can really only get an approximation. We can find an average for how it's changing. If we wanna know exactly how it's changing, then we need to have the tools of calculus. But let's say that we want to know how the function is changing at some specific point. Let's say at this x value, and we can call this a. And with algebra, we'll need to look at a point close to a. So let's say we're looking at maybe this point right here. And we can say that this is a plus some small amount, which we can call h. And if we want to know how this function is changing, its rate of change or its average rate of change, we can construct a line between the two points. And this line is a secant line. And this secant line, we can find its slope. And that slope will tell us roughly how steep the curve is at this point. But like I mentioned, if we want to know the exact answer, we need to use calculus. And with calculus, we don't need to look at a second point. We really just have one point. And with that one point, we will look at the tangent line. And notice that the tangent line, it just touches at this point right here. And that will give us the exact steepness of the function at that point. But we don't want to use the tools of calculus here. We just want to find an average rate of change. And to find the slope of the secant line, Remember that we define slope as the change in the y values or the change in the function values divided by the change in the x values. And if this function is g of x, then the change in the y values, we're essentially looking at how much we rose, what the rise is. Notice that this is at a y value of g of a plus h, and this is a y value down here for this point at g of a. So the change in the y values, we look at the bigger one and we subtract off the smaller one to find essentially this length right here. So we have g of a plus h minus g of a, and then we're going to divide everything by the change in the x values. But again, we'll take the bigger one and subtract the smaller one. We have a plus h, and we will subtract a from that. So this will simplify to g of a plus h minus g of a, all divided by h. And this quotient right here, this is what we call the difference quotient. This will give us the average rate of change for a function when we're looking at a specific x value and a point that's very close to that. Now, with calculus, we will take what's called a limit and we will let h approach zero. And by doing so, this point will essentially move along the curve until it essentially ends up on top of this point. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but for now, that can help your intuition. But of course, we're not going to take a limit here. We're not using calculus, so we don't need that. For now, we can just look at this difference quotient, which again gives us the average rate of change. 
And notice that we, for this problem, just need to look at the numerator here. We're not concerned with dividing everything by h. So this is really just the numerator of this difference quotient, which again finds the average rate of change of some function. So now that we have an idea of where this comes from, we can try to solve this problem. And the truth is we didn't need to go through this explanation to actually solve the problem, but rather than just blindly computing this without understanding it, it is often better to look at things from basic principles just so that we can give meaning to what we're doing. And let's start by just rewriting our function f of x. It's a quadratic x squared plus 2x. And we need to evaluate the function at a and at a plus h. So let's first start with a plus h. We'll plug it in anywhere we see an x. We have a plus h squared plus 2 times by a plus h. We can simplify this by multiplying out this perfect square, a plus h times by a plus h. And we'll distribute the 2 to both of these so that we get 2a plus 2h. And actually multiplying all this out, we would get a squared plus a h. And then we will distribute the h. We get another a h, so 2a h. And h times h, that's a squared, and of course we have this 2a and 2h at the end. Now that is f of a plus h, but we also need f of a. We just plug in a anywhere we see an x, we get a squared plus 2a. And now we can actually find that difference. So let's do f of a plus h minus f of a, and we have a squared plus 2ah. So let me just rewrite everything and then we can actually carry out the subtraction and then we're subtracting this entire quantity. So you can put it in parentheses and subtract it or you can just distribute the negative to both of these so that we get a squared, excuse me, minus a squared minus 2a. And lastly, let's combine like terms. We have a squared minus a squared and we have 2a minus 2a. So those will cancel out. And this difference here will become 2ah plus h squared plus 2h. So this right here will be our final answer. Though just to connect it with this difference quotient, right here we would just divide everything by h. So the slope of that secant line, if we divide everything by h, we would just get 2a plus h plus 2. And remember with calculus, we would take a limit and let h go to 0 if we want to find the exact steepness of the curve at this point right here, a. And by doing so, notice that this goes away. And we can just put the limit as h goes to 0 of this slope equation and we would just get 2a plus 2. So essentially whatever the a value actually is, we would double it and then add 2, and that would tell us the steepness of the tangent line. Since when we take that limit using the tools of calculus, then we're looking at the exact rate of change, and that gives us a tangent line rather than a secant line, which would go through two points. So our final answer is this 2ah plus h squared plus 2h.